Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to create a motion tween in Flash. So I've got a blank stage, a new document, and let's see, I will just go ahead and call this Bouncing Ball. So I'm just naming my layer Bouncing Ball, and there's actually a motion preset for this in Flash, but let's go ahead and create one for ourselves. So I'm going to focus just on this one layer on my timeline, my stage dimensions are set here and I've just got the default 550 by 400 24 frames per second. I'm on frame 1 which is currently an empty keyframe. I can tell by that little hollow disk and I can see that it's a blank stage, a blank frame. So I'm going to go ahead and use my oval tool and it's a pink fill with a dark gray stroke, thin stroke and I'll just here in the top left corner I'm going to go ahead and draw a ball. I'm going to right click on frame 1, which now has this pink ball. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to create a motion tween. It needs to convert it into a symbol, which is perfectly normal. I'll talk more about symbols in another video. So I'll just choose OK here. And it creates a motion tween, which for me lasts 24 frames or one second, but it's not really doing anything that exciting. I'm going to put my cursor on the end of this motion tween. I get a double arrow. I'm going to click and drag that all the way out to 72. So now my uh, animation is ultimately going to last about 3 seconds, 24 frames per second. I'm going to click, actually I was already there, but I'm going to click on the last frame of my animation, my 72nd frame, and I've got my selection handle my selection tool and I'm going to take this ball and I'm going to move it just off stage down here in the lower portion of the screen. So that is a motion tween and if I pressed my enter key right now you would see that this ball would just move down that path. You can see the path whenever you create a motion tween. So that's a basic motion tween. Let's enhance it a little bit. I'm going to go to about frame 25 or so and if I go to my pink ball at this frame, that's actually frame 26, and I move it up and down, you'll see that I start to bend the path. Okay, So I'm going to just bring it all the way down. Yeah, what the hell, I'll actually, before I do that, let me control Z, let me show you this too. See my path is kind of going through the middle of the ball? I'm going to fix that real quick. I'm going to use my free transform tool and I'm going to move this connection. See when I get that little dot by my pointer? I'm going to move that down to the bottom of the ball. So the only real difference I made is now my ball is attached to the path by the very bottom edge of it. So it's very faint, but it's just going to make our lives just a bit easier. Let me go back to that frame 26. My normal um, selection tool. Move this pink ball down to the bottom. Let it just touch the bottom of the stage. I'll go a few frames to the right. Raise it up few frames to the right, put it down, and then on the last frame I'll just yeah, I'll just move it off to the side. So now here's my pink ball and it's kind of bouncing along there. I'm going to use my selection tool still and I'm going to add a little bit of arc to these paths. I'm just going to click and drag just so they're not so straight. Do that a little bit, do this, do that little bounce. I'm going to take some of the point out of this. I'm just going to drag it down just to make it a smoother arc. So now my ball is kind of boing, boing, and then it's bounced away. So now my motion path actually has, or I'm sorry, my motion tween has a nice, nice path that gives it a more realistic bounce look. And you could enhance this a little bit too. If I go to the points on the um, movie, when the ball actually hits the bottom here, I could use my free transform tool and I could squash that ball a little bit. Let me squash it down there, make it a little bit wider, and then as it moves up a little bit, I will uh, re-roundify it. There we go. We could jump over to this one and kind of do the same thing, squash it just a little bit. So now it kind of has this look where when it hits, it, oh, I'm starting to bounce out a little bit too soon. That sometimes happens. So if I go, so right if it squashes right there, if I can go to the frame right before it squashes, I don't want to squash it yet, so I'll just resize it that way. So now it'll see how it looks. Squashes when it hits. That's a little bit better. So have fun with this. Play around with it. Motion tweens really don't have to be that complicated. Just draw something, right click, make it a motion tween. It'll convert it to a symbol. And then click on different parts of the timeline, which is points in the future, and position and shape that item 
how you want it to look. And then as you move down the timeline, your object will, of course, follow that path and do the thing that you told it to do.